Hello, and welcome to the podcast that discusses all things gaming. Coming to you from the home of Indie Popcon, Gen Con, and the gaming capital of the world, we are The Established Facts. Hello, everybody. I even and have a go on there. It was pretty fun. <laughs> oh, no, I interrupted you on purpose. Please continue. I hate you. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode... Like we haven't been gone for months and 216. Yeehaw. 216, True. huh? 216. 216. Uh, saving the game still hasn't caught up, but they're coming. <laughs> I can tell. Are they? <laughs> I mean, they're in the 180s right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. it's good yeah they're them. getting close. <laughs> You better hurry up and pump some more out. That is more, more than none. That is yeah. true. That is true. Well, hello, everyone. I'm so glad to be back. I know that I have missed uh, you, and you have missed me, absolutely, uh, over the last couple of months. But uh, no, I wasn't sick. I just uh, needed to take a little bit of time away for family and so forth. Nice. Josh is literally showing me that they're at 185 for saving the game. Well, right on, you guys. <laughs> we, we love you guys, and uh, one of these days... Uh, we'll all be in the same room playing games again. Hopefully, Fear the Con next year if that happens. But as a matter of fact, we're going to get into talking a little bit about some of the things that we're looking forward to happening uh, here in the near future. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce everybody at the table, and then we will get into our discussion today. We'll go ahead and start to my left. This is Josh. I'm Avi Tall. This is Princess Katie. I'm still Lance. And of course, this is your host, Big Don, and like I said, I am so glad to be back. Um, uh, you know, just had to take a little bit of family time away and uh, take care of stuff at home. Um, but uh, otherwise, otherwise, sorry, I didn't mean to catch you. Didn't mean to catch you off guard with the home and uh, Swedish, home yeah, <laughs> pork, pork. Um, so we, when we were off the mics, trying to figure out, you know, kind of what we wanted to talk about amongst ourselves and, and inspire you guys to talk about a little bit uh, in your own homes and so forth, friend gatherings, uh, is just sort of the silver lining of 2020. And what I mean by that, and I know that uh, this has been a a difficult year, um, whether it's just been from being locked down, from being able to get out and see people to... Um, uh, social issues that uh, have obviously come to uh, a head and the forefront for all of us, um, uh, you know, whether it be loss of job or uh, the unfortunate loss of family or friends. Um, you know, this has been a pretty tumultuous year. And uh, 2020, funny enough, I'm thinking back on our 2019 episode when we talked about the upcoming year of 2020. And I think at this point, we can all pretty much say, uh, the fools they were. Well, yeah, we were definitely. I mean, I what think how we naive. how naive is probably a, a good way to put it. Uh. We uh, I don't think any of us really saw this year being such a uh, an impactful year in a lot of ways. Um, but I think that there's a lot to be said on observing the things that. Uh, have gone well. And and uh, just to give you an example, um, uh, I've got a friend, um, uh, and I've, actually a few of the other podcast members know him. Uh, his name's Isaac, and uh, he does improv with um, uh, our improv company. And uh, he was just talking to me the other day about how a lot of people around him have said how horrible 2020 has been for them, but he has, since probably around 2009, just had year after year of just really hard times with the the loss of his mother and a lot of work things and uh, his, his wife um, just being ill and having to do multiple surgeries and things like that. So just a lot of pressure on him. And th- he said this year has felt like the first year where he's actually seen some really awesome blessings come around in his life he uh he and his wife just moved into a gorgeous new house uh he got a promotion at work he's got a new dog that's really helped him a lot with i think probably some of his um uh i I don't know if you would necessarily say anxiety but some of those social uh social things that can that can really get us all caught up in our own selves and having uh, a companion like that uh, like a, a dog 
to be around all the time and just be affectionate with is has been really helpful for him. And so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the things that uh, we have really been positively affected by in 2020. And and again, yeah, maybe look at the uh, the silver lining of what this year has been for us. We've had a lot of really uh, personal triumphs, I think, for a lot of us and personal um, victories. And uh, I would love for us to maybe talk a little bit about that and, and encourage each other a little bit with that. And then also talk about the things that we're looking forward to towards the end of the year and even in the beginning of 2021 as we uh, kind of round this corner of uh, nearing the fall season. So um, I wouldn't mind. Josh, are you okay with starting? Maybe sure. talking about some of the things that are going on with you, and, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, so I went from a first-level goblin rogue in Pathfinder Society <laughs> to a sixth-level goblin yeah. rogue. And how did you do that, Josh? So much Pathfinder Society through the digital conventions uh as a matter of fact if if virtual attendance counts which this year it better i think deb and i've been to like six conventions <laughs> well you got to go to you did PaizoCon, PaizoCon, uh concurrent popcon indie pax gen, gen con, con and uh no we did not do another con- convention but we did join up with one of the game masters we met at Pa Gen Con, who found us through our YouTube page, yeah. Nicole, if she's listening. So glad somebody's listening to our YouTube page. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was such a weird thing because she had commented on one of Deb's videos, which if you haven't checked those out, yeah. please do. Please uh, do. They're like vlogs. Yeah, they are, and um, she's enjoyed doing them. And we took a little bit of a break there um, as work started to ramp back up for everybody. We wanted to kind of get back into the um, swing of things, but. Yeah, Deb and I have just been able to play our society characters, and uh, we've developed enough of a rapport that we've started running into players that we've already played with, and they know us and remember us, <laughs> which has been pretty fun. So um, on a personal front, uh, ba- being back at work, uh, this is going to start sounding negative, but I think it's ultimately positive. I was working at the Carrier Corporation as a contractor and in May. They canceled my contract, not my works contract, because we still have a couple of guys that are working there, but mine specifically, which I think was definitely a blessing in disguise, especially if you ask my wife, um, because there were a lot of times where they were just driving me crazy, and it was I was ready to do something else. And since then, I think I've worked on three or four different projects with different customers, and I've really enjoyed kind of being able to do something different, because I was a carrier for eight years almost. Wow. Um, doing a lot of the same stuff and I enjoyed it. I really, I do miss working with that particular group of guys, but, um, the, the guys and gals that I'm working with now are, um, really good people. They really know what they're doing and they really want to see success with the customers. And personally, uh, my wife and I managed to pay off our cars. We have no car debt right now. Um, we're down to student loans and a mortgage that we were able to refinance. Like, a lot of positives came out of this. Um, and, you know, with Deb, of course, being a doctor, she's she's right in the thick of a lot of this. And, um, heck, even my mom caught the virus and and beat it and is back at work as a nurse. So it's a lot of positive has come out of it. And I look forward to some other positive things. Um, but that that is what has happened so far. All right. All right. Um, Avital. You've had some pretty cool things happen this year so far. Um, what uh, what are some of your highlights, some of your silver linings for 2020 this year? Well, um, so despite the fact that I didn't get to go to Europe this year and I didn't get a proposal in Venice, <laughs> which would have been really, really cool, Don't laugh at me. I'm not, Did he no, tell you I'm this agreeing. was his plan? Yeah. Oh well, that's good. Yeah, yeah I'm agreeing. He said. He said. <laughs> I. He's like. I wanted to propose to you in Venice, but that's obviously not happening now, and I don't don't know when it will, and I'll, I don't want to wait that long. There you go. Uh, but I got. I did get married this year, and I never wanted a big wedding, anyways. And I think. I think if this had happened. During any other time, people, like especially family, when they're well-meaning, 
would have wanted to make it into a bigger affair. And that is not at all what I wanted. So what we ended up doing was we filled out our paperwork with our officiant and then had our wedding actually a couple weeks later just in his parents' backyard. And then we live streamed it on my Twitch. Not that I use my Twitch very often, but anyways, we live streamed it. And a lot of people were able to experience it with us that way. And people that never would have, you know, made that trip anyways, even if we had had a wedding, like people that probably wouldn't, and this is not like to offend those people, but like wouldn't have gotten an invite. You know what I mean? Like, because you can't just invite every right. single person you when, know when everywhere. you have an, when you have a venue of seventy five you can't invite two hundred and fifty people yeah. right um so it was really that was a, a really cool thing of like people being able to experience that with us and maybe we would have thought of doing it that way otherwise, but I don't know, you know, and this way it was a, I was able to keep it small like. I wanted to, and and I'm married now, and that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and all the silver linings that come with that. <laughs> Congratulations. Sorry. So George, George Harris' song. Yep. And I'm also kind of using this time to, well, I've been, I've been dealing with my mm. mental health and depression and things like that, right? And that's been really hard for me, but that wasn't caused because of all this, that that was happening before we were in lockdown and all those kind of things, but just coming to terms with like what I want to do and like the creative goals that I've had for years that I haven't really put in a whole lot of effort. And we're now putting plans into place for me to be able to work more exclusively on my like writing and things that I want to do. And I'm really excited about looking forward to that for the future. So That's awesome. <clears throat> Well, what about you, Princess Katie? Um, well, super thankful that uh, my husband and I, we were able to take our honeymoon in January before 2020 turned into the raging dumpster fire that it has been for most of the year. <laughs> um, back, Worst Jumanji game ever. Yeah, yeah. back before we, we <laughs> knew what, what was going to happen, we probably wouldn't have come back. Um, <laughs> we, you we were would, in New Zealand, right? Right, yeah. Like we, the we the number one performing country yeah, we, in the world right now? We would have stayed there. <laughs> we, would, we would never have come back. He wouldn't have heard from us again. We'd be living in a yurt somewhere. But um, <laughs> Nope, they're in the hobbit hole <laughs> right now. <laughs> But, no, but if you live in a yurt, you can rave outside of it. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the, be... yurt, the yurt's the, the relax, the rave is everywhere else. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, so we were really, really thankful that, that we were able to to take our honeymoon uh, when we intended on taking it. Um, this year, for me, has like sucked pretty massively. Like Avital said, with the mental health stuff, for me, it was absolutely corona-induced. So... I will say the best thing that has happened to me this year has been our our sweet little puppy man that we got last November. Um, Jake and I both agreed that he was probably the best decision we've ever made because having him, he's just always happy. He's a dog. Dogs are so sweet. Like, he's always excited to see us when we get home from work because since we work in shipping, our jobs never stop. There was never a work-from-home option. You know, freight's got to keep moving. Medical supplies have to keep moving. People are ordering food. Like, so we, we worked through all of it the whole time. And having him to come home to, to always be so excited to see us. And, you know, that's definitely the, the highlight of the year. And uh, not going places has given me a chance to read more this year. Um, I've always been a, a fan of reading. But this year I've really been able to read a lot more. And I've branched out and read... A lot of nonfiction. I've read things I wouldn't normally read. I've branched out. Um, I actually just met my Goodreads goal yesterday, which was 50 books for the year. Nice. So I... Uh, <laughs> I haven't met mine <laughs> I say, so that's... A, I, I'm going to up it and and see how you know high I can go for the year. But yeah, so it's, it's really nice to get back into reading as extensively as I used to when I was younger. So that's been nice. Okay, cool. Lance, how about you, sir? You've been writing notes for 
the entirety, sir. Well, <laughs> trying to find those. I'm silver trying to linings. find the silver linings. <laughs> um, I'm still here. There you, know, you go. I, I didn't expect to make it this far into my life. So there's the biggest silver lining. Yeah. I, think. I did not expect to live this long. Uh, health reasons, whatever you want to call it. So that's a thing. Like, I'm still here. Which meant, like, last year I didn't plan on going to any conventions for gaming, so I didn't miss out on making plans and then having to cancel plans. So there's mm-hmm. another silver lining. Yeah. Right? I didn't lose anything. And that's that's my biggest thing of this year is that I, a lot of people would say, like, if you expected to die but you didn't die, every day is a new day, right? But it's just, that's that's survival. That's continuing. That's not... That's not super serial. I'm not. Every day is wonderful and fantastic because it's not. I'll be honest with you. There are good days. There are bad days. Absolutely. The silver linings come in the moments. Right. Like my daughter got braces, so she gets to get her teeth fixed when everyone's wearing masks, so no one's gets to make fun of her face. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a good one. Um. Let's see. What did I put on here? Um, my youngest cousin got married, so lots of lots of weddings, you know, as as it happens. But we all got to go. We pressured the church into letting us go because we are a rather big family. Mm-hmm. I come from a Catholic family, not to promote any religion on the show, but we are nine aunts and uncles strong, twenty six grandchildren strong, and I think we're almost to forty something great grandkids strong. Wow. That's awesome. And the church finally said, you know what? That's a lot of money. We'll take it. So she got to have her her church wedding with her family there. So there's a thing. Uh, my grandmother turns 100 years old next month. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. She's, we call her the saint of our family, right? Yeah. She's been there. She raised kids in a post-depression world almost by herself because her husband died very young. Yeah. So... To watch her, to be there with her as she hits the, her centennial year, and take her to New York so she can meet Al Roker. There you That's go. That's the only thing she wants to do is go meet. <laughs> That's Al Roker. awesome. Is is one good thing about this year that we're looking forward to? Let's see. Yeah, not a whole lot has changed sure. for me. Honestly, I mean, I'm a stay home dad. I did get to have my family home all of us for a few weeks as the schools were closed and my wife being and working in education and my daughter going to school, I just had them home. My wife was blessed to be able to work from home because she's an IT person and IT people are in high demand, yep. especially mm-hmm. with the whole like virtual schooling thing that happened. And my daughter, love her to death, she took to virtual school like it was what she was supposed to be doing this whole time. So really, no change there, except I got to be surrounded by my family, which is the number one thing that motivates me in the Mm -hmm. whole wide world, right? When I have my mental health issues, I lean heavily on them, and I get better a whole lot quicker. Let's see. I started running uh, role-playing games instead of just playing in them. I was looking for groups to play, and I couldn't find any, so I said, you know, I'm just going to take that leap get back into dungeon mastering or storytelling or role playing uh, role game mastering and just did it you know i said fine this is the time let's just do it anybody yeah. want to join me and some people said yes so that's been going we've been doing that for a few months now mixed reviews yeah but you know i'm a bit rusty since it's been over 15 years it since was, i ran yeah. a game yeah <laughs> But, you know, get back into it. I never stop running. Even when I'm playing, I'm trying to help the DM or the GM with their story, giving them ideas. So those are things. Um, so that's what's going on personally. I don't know if you wanted to know it's like some other ones I've seen. Or you want to save that for a later topic? We can, we can save that for, for a little later. All right. Yeah. Then I'm done. That's good stuff. Wrap it up. That's good stuff. I love I love the fact that when we started talking about this, it seemed like we're like, oh, I don't, I don't really know, I don't know where the silver linings are. But it, I mean, as Lance has just displayed, there's a lot of things that you can look at in a nuance that can definitely be a huge inspiration to, you know, imagining if this wasn't 2020, would this happen? 
Right. Or would it happen this way? And and of course, I am ever the optimist. Uh, so I'm always looking for the silver lining in in uh, something. And and some of the things, you know, uh, on a personal note, um, because of the lockdown, I actually lost my job in March. But uh, you know, just just circumstances being what they were, whether you call it uh, a blessing or coincidence, I, I don't tend to believe much in coincidence, but uh, that's just me. Um, uh, I, my family and I, I've been out of work since March, and we haven't missed a bill. We haven't been you know behind on anything. We've been able to pay early and on time, and I paid off my credit card and things like that, and that's without that's without working. And so what's been really cool also is with I have three sons and two of them are in school. Uh and so they've been doing the e-learning thing which has been a huge challenge. Uh not just for them um but for us and I don't think I have sent as many emails to a teacher in my entire <laughs> life as I have in the last 2 months. Um, but it's really, I think what's been really interesting is I value my kids' education so much more right now. Uh, not to say that I didn't care for how things were being taught, uh, or I didn't care about, I should say, care about how things were being taught to them previously, because uh, education has also always been uh, very important for my wife and I when it comes to our kids. <clears throat> but we have a very active role in that right now, which I think is really interesting because I think it puts a lot of understanding uh, or it, it puts a lot of uh, perspective changing in the hands of parents who, you know, a year ago or two years ago may have just as easily flown off the handle at their kid's teacher because of something they didn't like. And it's like, oh, well, look, now you get a chance to be the first person shooter in your kid's own educational journey, you know? Yeah. So it's, and, and I think it's really interesting because this, you know, getting into, this e-learning thing, uh, and and my wife and I, we tried doing homeschooling for uh, a year, and it just it did not mesh well with us. Um, but I think what's really interesting is with this, you know, e-learning, we don't have to worry about putting together curriculum or anything like that. But we do get an opportunity to be active in you know, their instruction and how they build their day and their successes and their failures and being able to kind of sit down with them and, and talk to them about how to, you know, how to look at a math problem a little bit differently so it might be easier for them to figure out or uh, something like that. Um, so that's been that's math been really cool. Why they change math? <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, it's insane. Um, but what's been, you know, what's been really cool is just kind of being able to be at home more with my kids, uh, and being able, you know, now, now I go to the grocery store for an hour, hour and a half trip and they're like, where are you going? And I'm like, <laughs> calm down. Like I'm, I'm literally just leaving for an hour, hour and a half, you know? Um, and so that's, that's really funny. And of course I'm an extreme extrovert. So this, there have definitely been trials, uh, for a lot of this stuff in the first month or two, you know, going through March and April and trying to figure out, okay, how, how does one who, uh, thrives in a crowd of 60,000 people and loves everything about Gen Con, deal with not being able to see your friends for two and a half months. Uh, that's, it, I mean, it was rough. Josh and I talked a lot on Facebook and just like, oh dear God, could you just like call me on the phone or, you know, drive by really quickly and wave at me or something so that I know humans still exist. Um, so that was difficult. But I think what has come out of that for me is it's allowed me to examine my relationships that I have with people. Uh, it's uh, it's allowed me to reach out to friends that I had not talked to in probably over a decade and rekindle some of those friendships, or even if not rekindling them in a in you know full force. Just being able to say, hey, just so you know, I know that it's been forever since we've talked, but I still think about you guys, you know. And if you ever need anything or if you're ever doing anything and, and you happen to be in town and you want to grab a drink or a coffee or something like that, just reach out because I just want you to know I'm still here. We may not be active all the time, but I'm still here. Um, and so that's been really cool is being able to kind of rekindle some of those connections with people. Uh, and then um, probably one of the biggest things that's happened in this recent time frame was 
two weeks ago? Is it two weeks now or is it three? My brother and our friend Les and I drove from uh, Lafayette, Indiana. We drove up from Indy to Lafayette. If you don't know Lafayette, Indiana, it's where Purdue University is. Uh, we drove from Lafayette, Indiana to White Plains, New York. Uh, picked up a U-Haul, loaded said U-Haul, and moved our good friend and improv acting coach, Peter Spellows, from White Plains to now being an Indianapolis, Indiana resident. Wow. So mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. he now lives here, uh, which has been really cool because most, uh, you know, the large percentage of his students are here in Indy. Um, but what's been really cool is he's also been able to make new connections with people through, you know, refer, uh, referrals and things like that. Just he, say it. You guys did it. What? Your, your, your small acting group, Breakfast yeah. Anytime. Yeah. They did that. Yeah. 100%. It was crazy. And, and it was, my brother and I drove up on Thursday to meet Les in Lafayette. We drove out of Lafayette on Friday, 12 hours. We picked up the U-Haul, spent three to three and a half hours loading the U-Haul, and then drove 12 hours that night, and then another four and a half or five hours Sunday, and then helped unload. <laughs> and then I took the truck back on Monday because I was tired. <laughs> it, it was quite yeah. a thing that unload was day was because Peter's in his 60s, and he's been basically quarantined since March and has only gone out for groceries and stuff. Yeah, But when we showed up, to move him in, I got a picture of it somewhere that there were twenty five people yeah. in his apartment, Waiting. all masked up, just ready to do whatever he ready needed to us it. to do. It was great. It was awesome. Yeah, and I've my brother and I have gone back a couple of times over the last few weeks uh, to help you know put furniture together, and and he's had tons of people just coming over and helping him with putting furniture together, sorting out books, or pulling out old pictures, and and it's just really cool to be able to see how much just a change of location can change your perspective. Um, Because, you know, when we moved him out of his little two-bedroom, you know, basically uh, double, if you will, um, uh, you know, it was was definitely, I mean, he pretty much just stayed in his bedroom for a majority of the time that he was there, and that's been like the last, I think, eight years of his life. And so being able to move him into an apartment – that is his apartment that has his things in it that he can walk out of his bedroom and he can see his old pictures from when he did this show or that movie or this TV show or check out his, you know, Doctor Who memorabilia or see his four bookshelves worth of books that he still has to finish unpacking. I mean, I mean it's incredible. Books. It's incredible. Books and we joked important. we joked around about the fact that about half of the playbooks that he has are um former library books that he <laughs> forgot to take back to the library <laughs> you, you <laughs> 40 years ago, you know. Uh, I, I yeah. might have some of those from high school oh, that yeah. I forgot to turn back in. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but that's Eve! been really, no. yeah, right. And that's, <laughs> that's been really, really cool. And then the weekend after that is so funny. The weekend after that, I helped uh, our friend Isaac McKern uh, move he and his wife into their new house. Uh, and then the weekend after that, uh, I helped my aunt and uncle move some heavy furniture and a piano out of my grandmother's storage unit. <laughs> what do you charge? Uh, uh, you know, I'm thinking about making this a professional choice. Uh, literally this weekend, my cousin hit me up and was like, hey, what are you doing on Saturday? Would you mind uh, maybe coming and helping uh, move something? I said, well, unfortunately for you, <laughs> I'm actually booked up this whole weekend. Uh, Advice so. for anyone who who is thinking about buying a pickup truck. That's when your friends start asking you to help. That's them. it. That's it. And see, I just have a minivan, but <laughs> but I've driven box trucks like crazy, so I I know what I'm doing. Um, I'm sure Tim and a truck are hiring. Are they? Uh, <laughs> they might. I might look that up. Maybe, yeah. We'll see. Two men in a mask in a truck. Two men in a mask in a truck. That's it. <laughs> two men, one mask. That was the I'm way you said this. Like, two men, one mask. Two, two men, men, one mask. mask. It's supposed to two men, two masks. It's got four straps. It's got four straps on it, and you just breathe in each other's faces for an hour and a half. Uh, No, no. Just one pose that connects the two. Oh, man. 
Good grief. All right. So, um, you know, kind of kind of taking into consideration. Oh, and so unfortunate side of things. Obviously, my, my cousin and my 90-year-old grandmother um, got COVID. My 90-year-old grandmother was asymptomatic. Both of them full recovery. Um, my cousin still has some lingering issues with like her breathing and things like that. Mm-hmm. But overall, she's been doing really, really well. And I know that that's definitely kind of a, a, a lingering side effect from it is, is just trying to get back to being able to catch your breath and, and, and breathe and things like that. So for any of you uh, that have experienced any of that thing, you know, uh, we, we definitely, we send our love and, uh, you know, and positive vibes, prayers, things like that to you. And uh, hope that you just continue to recover and continue to stay safe. Um, with that being said, so I... Some virtual Lysol. That's right. Uh <laughs> So spray it on surfaces. Please don't drink it. <laughs> or inject it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah, right, that, yeah. <laughs> um, so when it comes to the rest of this year, so looking into our near future, there are a lot of really cool things happening on uh, or in the world of gaming. Uh, if you have not been paying attention. Um, PlayStation has a new console coming. Oh, two new consoles coming out. A new console? Yeah. Xbox has... So surprised, Avi Tall. Yeah. Xbox so has surprised. two new consoles coming out. Uh, there are a million and a half different new computer po- components coming out. Uh, all of these new games, like, I think, is Halo Infinite, I think, Halo is Infinite's slotted been pushed for this? to 2021. Okay, that's fine. Uh-huh. Um, they got mad uh, because the way it looked didn't look as next gen as they expected it to. Sure. Well, yeah, that's what happens. When I know you it's use, a Halo game. That's what, what happens wanting? when you use old gen for new gen. It doesn't <laughs> make sense. Um, uh, Hogwarts Legacy. Has anyone else seen oh. the yes. trailer for Hogwarts it's, Legacy? Okay, that okay. debuted with Sony. Oh my gosh, open war. Yeah, but that's okay because it's still coming. I know out it on is, but I still. Plat, but yeah. Um, yeah, I was worried about it when I was watching the trailer because I was watching a trailer and then I watched a review. And they were like, I'm so excited to be able to play this on my PlayStation. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Do no. I have to succumb to the dark side? Yes, will. that's right. That's you right. Will. I won't. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. I'll just do what you do. I'll just upgrade my PC. And then I'll go Sony brand on my PC yeah. games. Uh, but there's a lot of board games and a lot of different things coming out. Uh, this year. So uh, I wanted to kind of highlight on a couple of things that maybe uh, we're looking forward to when it comes to uh, gaming sorts of things or maybe future uh, conventions or something like that. I know that that seems like it is so far away because of this year being such a, a crazy, crazy phenomenon. But um, phenomenon. Phenomenon. Na, 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 na. Okay. <laughs> That's all we can do for that one. Um, but um, I would, I would. You know, I know Josh is probably the most jacked up about this, so I'm going to go ahead and start with Josh, give everybody an opportunity <laughs> to figure out if they want to say anything. I'm just going to say now, Josh took mine. Josh took yours. I okay. did? Okay. Say it now, oh. so I don't have to say so it later. So that you don't have to yeah, say it later. You. Right, right, right. All right, Joshy. <laughs> yes, so he, he did. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, Thanks. so, uh, um, yeah. No. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Oh goodness um, gracious! So yeah, absolutely. PlayStation Five and PlayStation Five Digital Edition at five hundred and four hundred dollars. I'm super excited about because I've been a Sony fan for a long time. But on the same note, I'm actually excited for Microsoft, though I probably won't be purchasing the same way that others will with the release of the Xbox Series X at five hundred dollars and the Series S at three hundred dollars. The reason why I'm excited for Microsoft on that is that they, through their all access system, are going to allow for people to effectively finance the devices mm-hmm. at twenty five dollars a month for the S and thirty five dollars mm-hmm. a month for the X, including Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which by itself is fifteen dollars a month. Yeah. So, so you're basically paying, for fifty bucks a month, you're paying no, you're paying. $25 a month, that includes oh, Xbox that in- Game Pass Ultimate. Oh. Yes. That's why it's such a... Because you're basically paying $10 for the S and 20 oh. for the X. I thought they were saying that it's in in addition to... It's included. The, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, right. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, for those who don't know, um, there are about 200 uh, first-party titles from Xbox 
Microsoft's game studios that are available for you to download and play. Mm, and sometimes it, for free, sometimes at an, an extremely no, huge if they're, discount. If they are a Game Pass title, they are free. Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying, like, I have Game Pass on my Xbox One right. now. When I get on my Game Pass to look through the games, they have a catalog of, ex, or of, of game, pass games. game Pass games that are free, but then they also have a large library of titles that are at a very large discount. Discount because as well. you're a Game that's Pass all, Yeah, that's gotcha. all I was saying. Uh, but with Game Pass Ultimate, it also includes Game Pass for PC, which has about 100 games on the PC library, and Xbox Live Gold, which is their online um, subscription that you need, which comes with currently comes with about two to three free games a month as well as online access so it's it's quite the proposition to because microsoft's been doing this gaming as a service well windows as a service office as a service for a while that now they're trying to kind of jump in with gaming as a service for those that are into pc gaming if you have game pass for pc uh you get all those games and if you have game pass ultimate any first party title from microsoft that's coming out on the xbox series x or s is also coming to pc which is why i probably won't purchase an xbox myself because i already have a pc that's capable of it right or certainly will be when new graphics cards which are coming out (laughs) from nvidia uh their 3080 just came out this week which was sold out like insanity 3090 is coming out next week 3070 is coming out first of october amd is releasing new cpus first of october um and new graphics cards based off the same architecture that's going to be in the playstation 5 and xbox series devices at the end of october so anyone trying to get into video games can really be stoked about what's coming Mm -hmm. and those that already have current gen devices they are not losing support. Both Microsoft and PlayStation have said that there are games still coming out for their consoles. And Microsoft specifically said not every game, but a good amount of them are coming out in both generations as the generational leap happens. That way they don't have to jump on it immediately. Um, so don't don't have fear of missing out. Um, no FOMO. Right, no FOMO for you. Uh, <laughs> Sony just botched their pre-order and just apologized for their botch with plans to release new playstations in the next in the coming weeks so people can pre-order it so it's a busy time from a video game perspective and i could certainly talk about more things but i want to let other people talk first <laughs> sure <laughs> well does uh avital katie lance do you guys have anything that you have kind of in the back of your head that you are really excited about um, seeing come around or there's not anything specific that i'm looking forward to i'm just I miss the friends that I only see at conventions, mm-hmm. and I don't know when that'll happen again. But but I, whenever I, it does, whenever it does, on it. I will be so hyped. Yeah, I probably like won't sleep the whole weekend. Yeah, you know what I told Josh well, you know, we'll earlier see. this year. <laughs> I said based on how 2020 has gone. I think I may actually attend every convention that Indiana has next year. Like, <laughs> the Future Farmers of America convention. Just, I'm there. Give me a blue jacket. TV. I'm down. <laughs> FDIC, I'll go watch some Jaws of Life demos. I do not care. Yeah, that that's... The idea for the Indiana Convention Center, a 500 to $700 uh, season pass for conventions. Amen. I'm down. Bro, I'm down. I'm coming to this convention. Are you a farmer? No. no. Do you have the season pass? Yes. yes. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Pay for that hotel real fast. I'm <laughs> telling you. I would, I would throw down on something like that just just to just. To just. Become a just platinum just. member and just set you just. up with a room in the convention center <laughs> yeah. that you get to stay yes. in. It's like it's like a <laughs> suite when it's you like go to the bedroom. Pacer games. <laughs> yes, I like that. That's so good. Oh, what are you here for? I don't know. I, I'm an, All I'm of it. The catering. <laughs> <laughs> my, kid, my kids are driving me nuts. What conventions yeah. this weekend? Yeah, right. Oh that my goodness. Are there food trucks? <laughs> are there food trucks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Katie, you got anything? Yeah, uh, November 20th, there yeah. is a new Zelda game coming Yeah, out. there it is. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, and I'm really excited because the other uh, Hyrule Warriors weren't canon. They were just Dynasty Warriors with Zelda characters, essentially. So this is, um, I was watching a little promo video on it, it was uh, all done with the original team that did Breath of the Wild, um, they worked on all of it, the storyboarding, all all aspects of the game. 
So I'm really excited to see another canon piece of Zelda happen before <coughs> the sequel to Breath of the Wild, which is going to be, we don't know when. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Lance. I'm really looking forward to a backgammon game. Mm-hmm. A new backgammon 2021. Cool. Like, I've been playing backgammon online yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Teaching my daughter poker so that she doesn't get taken care oh, of. Oh, there you go. When there she you grows go. Up. Nice. Uh, no, as far as <laughs> upcoming games that I'm looking forward to, Diablo 4, I hear, is supposed to be a thing. Josh, you want to talk about that? <laughs> I so, figured you were going to hit this one, so I was going to... No, I, I... He didn't steal yours? No, I tried to stay oh out of the actual gosh. game releases to give people the opportunity to talk about them. Uh, <laughs> I don't... I'm not 100% if Diablo 4 is due this year or the first part of 2021. But Diablo 4 is one of the titles that is slotted for next generation consoles, PC, and I believe even Google Stadia. Um, for those who don't know what Google Stadia is, it's Google's streaming gaming platform where they use servers in the cloud and you use a controller um, to play games on your TV. I mean, all the processing's handled offline, uh, well, online at some at some server farm. That's a pretty interesting concept because that's also where Baldur's Gate three is going to launch. That one I'm pretty sure is this year. Um, and for those that played the Baldur's Gate series, this one is kind of a big deal um, because it's kind of the first time that they've hit that next generation of graphics. With I was going to say, game. I played Baldur's Gate. 900 years ago it feels like like the original yeah. was it was Pools fun way, well, way, yeah way it was so back. much fun yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, just adjust right <laughs> i'm gonna ro- <laughs> i'm gonna roll back my statement because i forgot about neverwinter which is yeah. D- D's yes. uh mmo uh definitely check that one out that's been on the current gen consoles for a while yeah. and i believe they're planning to move towards next gen as well because it's a money maker for them so yes <laughs> Um, yeah, Diablo three, Diablo four looks pretty intense. Uh, the trailers that have been released so far are just cinematic trailers, and they are not real safe for kids because they're creepy. Yeah, but it's a Diablo game, and you can't really be that surprised by it. But um, <laughs> I'm sorry, there's a hook on my table that I was using to hang something up on the wall, and then didn't do it. So uh, I got more. I'm a pirate. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. I was holding a. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure I, again, could talk about more games, but Don, please. Yes, absolutely. I have lots and lots and lots and lots of games that I want to talk about. So, uh, I have recently started playing, which is so foreign to me, not because I don't like first person shooters, not because I don't love video games, but because since I am unemployed and helping kids take care of their e-learning at home right now, I have a lot more time at home in my hand to in, at hand in my hand too much time on, on right? a watch too much time. or on the clock yeah. oh, there's God. way too much time for me to be <laughs> sitting in front of my tv and playing call of duty uh i have never been um like the biggest call of duty fan i was always kind of a halo mark a big halo fan uh i'm really excited about halo infinite whenever it hits um which it doesn't surprise me that they pushed it back because they do that with every other halo title anyway (laughs) um but i'm really excited for that i'm extremely excited for hogwarts legacy so when i saw that trailer i just lost my mind um uh, but there's a new Call of Duty uh, game coming out, uh, Call of Duty Cold War, mm-hmm. which I'm I'm stoked about as well because I've been really enjoying uh, uh, the Call of Duty campaign stuff and then Warzone and playing multiplayer and things like that online. Uh, and then uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yep. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Valhalla. That and Fable 4. <laughs> There's another fable yes, coming out. Yes, ma'am. On the yep. new on this discovery. Coming oh out. yeah, it's gonna. Oh be yeah, so good. Facebook's Oculus new Oculus <clears throat> Quest Two is getting a missed remake for yeah. VR. Yeah, really? I'm just yeah. yeah. That actually might be kind of cool because just I just like the visual coolness of that game. Like way back when we yeah. had it on the computer, like it was. So cool, and then there was a level with tree houses, and tree houses are so cool. <laughs> the, wow, the well, Oculus Quest Two, by the way, is going to be two ninety nine, releasing later this year, and hey, is a standalone VR headset that you can buy games for. Hey, guess nice. what? So guess it's basically got what? She's pointing a hook. Not, at, hold on, not. she's pointing a hook at me. Okay, what? sorry, my fault. Guess what my husband is it's, doing is getting into in school VR game development. Hey. Yay! Nice. What were you saying, now, Don? Before I got threatened with a hook. 
<laughs> I don't remember. Hey, uh, we have a good friend now. who does things in the virtual oh, yeah. Do we? reality thing. Yeah. Anything on any news on that front? <laughs> Tracy Hickman is back to writing and uh the void still remains closed. Okay. That's what I know right now. Well, that's all right. That's so he is surprising. finishing the third book in the Eventide trilogy. He is working on that nice. right now. Awesome. Um, so that's good. I do yeah. know about that. And I know he had knee replacement surgery, I believe. That's he awesome. posted about that. Oh. It was It got delayed. It got delayed. And then all of a sudden he got a call. was like, uh, we've got a slot. We just opened up. Do you want to come and get this done? Um, so Take care of it, Doc. He, he that's his, awesome. That's awesome. Sorry. I got lucky that. When in like February or January, whenever I scheduled my sinus surgery, that I actually I scheduled it for August to be after all the conventions. <laughs> nice. As so it turns th- out, it was after the <clears throat> lockdown and no right. and non-essential yeah. surgery time, so I was still That's able to great. have surgery. But yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. It worked out. Yeah. So, well. Since you got to run off on Microsoft games, which and. And Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 I'm glad you did. Yeah. Uh, Spider Man Miles Morales. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And then they showed <laughs> absolutely no graphics about this, but I don't care. God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. I'm so stoked about that. I cannot believe they're going to explore Ragnarok. That's so. Two Viking new. games in one year? I know. Well, and if you played the original, not the original, but the recent God of War, where they went from being based on the Greek gods yeah. to. Somehow, Kratos is now associated with the Norse gods, including Vikings are in man. Yeah, um, the, I don't want to give it this. There's a they're spoiler trending. element Vikings involving that, but now Ragnaros member, so they've yeah. like fully transitioned him over into the Norse god That's pantheon. Cool. So I'm down. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Thank I'm you, down. <laughs> Thank you, Marvel. And then of course. Paizo will probably have 1,452 different supplements and adventure guides. And uh, so, and- from a Paizo perspective... No, you're supposed to have one book. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. That's the core. Well, actually, this year, they're not having a lot of new books come out. A lot, sure. of the, a lot of the publishing got delayed to next year, but they are having a ton of scenarios, and they are doing um, some cleanup on how you track your society characters. Okay. So um, Pathfinder First Edition is being left as is. You can still play First Edition games at any of the conventions Paizo's doing. Um, so if you still wanted to continue <laughs> expanding upon your First Edition character, those are available. <coughs> but they are taking Second Edition Pathfinder and Starfinder and moving all of the chronicling to online. So nice. you Good. don't have to maintain oh, a have book to of chronicle sheets. Chronicle sheets. Yes. They're that's, so starting in October, they are going to be pushing new scenarios that take that. And then um, they Do no they longer automatically add your boons to your character. Sheet? So here's the thing about boons. Boons have kind of gone away moving forward boons. for, well, for achievement boons. points. Boons. So <laughs> as, as it's weird how this works. So you don't earn <laughs> boons at conventions, but you spend your achievement points to get those boons. So some of those boons are access to races that are so uncommon. Un- so they're unlockables. Basically. Got it. Um, but it allows them to track it all online. You have a certain number of achievement points, you spend it, and now they know you have that boon instead of someone just showing up with a boon and they had no track of who had it. It also cuts down on like the eBay sales of boons. Yep. And it cuts down on People general do waste. Yeah. People sell all sorts of things on eBay. Animal Crossing? Animal Crossing, right? You know, like uh-huh. family friendly. I'm just a random little person hanging out with animal village friends. Yes. People were selling the new characters that came out for Animal Crossing New Horizons because um, back on the Wii U, they had, um, and the 3DS, they had, they're like RFID cards that had yeah. characters on them. You know, you could import characters uh-huh. if you collected the cards. You could do that as well on the Switch version. It's able to do that, but. In this game, there were like, I think like six or seven new characters introduced this game that you could only get if they showed up on your island in like your campsite or randomly populated as one of your villagers. And there were people selling them for thousands of thousands of dollars Mm -hmm. online and people were buying them. The RTX 3080, which just came out Thursday, Tuesday, something along those lines, somebody got a hold of one and put it on eBay. It's a $700 graphics card for $70,000. Somebody bought one for like ten grand. Yeah, that's people insane. people buy things for for those Gosh. awful prices. Yeah, yeah, that's what Nintendo, patience people. Well, Nintendo patience. actually like you know Good made a bunch night. of updates to Animal Crossing to stop people from spending thousands of real life dollars on in game stuff because right. they're like this is supposed to be fun. Please stop. Please yeah. stop. 
please. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole other discussion for a, a podcast on its own. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> Yeah. Interesting idea. Okay. A podcast. All right. We should start one. We should start one of those. I think that would be good. I don't think anybody would listen. We should no? continue. <laughs> Podcasts are out. It's one vlogging. Of those. Uh, vlogging's, <laughs> vlogging's in. Where it's vlogging's out. in. What's up, everybody? I don't know what that was. I'm so sorry. That was... Anyways. Your vlog sona needs work. Is Vine still a thing? <laughs> it's no, Vine. Through TikTok. TikTok. TikTok's getting banned on Sunday, apparently. But, hey. uh, yeah, apparently. It, it was... Because, you know, we're in the future now. We're in the future. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is probably launch on Monday. Let us so. know if TikTok got so, banned right. on Sunday. So either rip TikTok or glad TikTok got saved at the last minute. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Either way, it's rip TikTok. <laughs> All right. So on our last episode, episode 215, which was, by the way, listening back to it, it's been a long time since I've actually listened back to a lot of our episodes. I really loved the two word adventure hook idea. That was so good. Someone say hook. And I yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I as I was listening to it, I was like I was writing out my responses to like sandy crabs and things like that like for real. I was like, "Okay, all right." And I and I was totally on on board with your mercenary group for sandy crabs yeah. just so you know i was like i was thinking like pirate pirates or something along those lines but like when you were like i was thinking humans or something like that i was like yeah dude on the same page anyway <laughs> on episode 215 of the established facts we established that game stories can be turned into movie trailers <laughs> and on episode 216 We have established that now that 60% of 2020 is over, we can honestly say this year has been extremely rough. But anything is better than two men in a mask. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like that should be this. Today's show sponsor is two men in a mask. Two men in a mask. (laughs) Today's episode brought to you by the letter P and two men in a mask. (laughs) All right. Thank you so much for listening to episode 216 of The Established Facts, and we will check you later. Bye. 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 Deuces. Please visit us at www.theestablishedfacts.com and our Facebook page, facebook.com slash theestablishedfacts. If you'd like to support us by buying some merchandise, visit cafepress.com slash castingrobot. Bonus.